you had told me when I was 16 years old that one day somebody would come up to me and throw me the keys to their works lightweight Le Mans Jaguar C-Type, I would have told you that you were absolutely crazy. But this morning, that's exactly what happened. Jaguar had come out with the XK120 sports car immediately after World War II, which was just a, a technological tour de force. It was so far ahead of everything else that was uh, being produced in the world at that time as far as sports cars. And the XK120 ultimately served as the basis for the C model or the competition model. And they took the original first C type to Le Mans in 1951 and uh, won the 24-hour uh, race there, which was the first time that a British car had won in, in over two decades. The big thing that came on the scene in 52 that changed Jaguar's position of dominance was Mercedes unveiling the 300 SL sports racing car. So Jaguar was forced to kind of go back to the drawing board and say, you know, we got to rethink these cars so we can beat the Mercedes Benzes next year. So for 1953, they made a special series of three cars, of which this car behind me is one of them. And the Works Lightweights featured a number of differences, four-wheel hydraulic disc brakes, the first time uh, that technology was uh, used at Le Mans. They also had a lighter uh, aluminum body. They saved a lot of weight out of these cars. They also fitted them with Weber carburetors, so it had a bit more power, better throttle response. At the end of the 24 hours, a Jaguar took three of the top four places. In 1953 was sort of the swan song for the C-Type because of course they were moving on to the D-Type program. So at the end of 1953, this particular car was sold to the great Scottish racing team, the Curia Koss, where it was raced by a number of different drivers throughout 1954 uh, with great success, including I think eight overall victories at places like uh, Goodwood and Silverstone, Snetterton, Olton Park, etc. When you consider who drove this particular car and its place in uh, 1950 sports car racing history, no less than five Le Mans winning drivers of this period sat behind uh, the wheel of this particular car, which almost gives you goosebumps when you get into its seat. When you get behind the wheel of an XK120, if you're driving other cars of the period, it's quite clear that Jaguar was really on their game. It feels very sure-footed on the road. Uh, you take it through a couple of fast sweepers and you really get the feeling that it's very planted. It doesn't feel like a car that's going to bite you and do anything nasty. But you know, what I love about these cars is how communicative they are on the road. How when you're going through a corner, you feel in the seat of your pants and through the steering wheel, every little movement, every little uh, pebble that you drive over. The exhaust note is one that makes you want to just rev it and rev it and rev it. gets sweeter and sweeter the farther up you go into the rev range. It's a piece of history, it's a piece of artwork, it's a piece of British motor racing legacy and certainly a piece of Jaguar's legacy. You know, when you think of this car in the context of other significant Jaguars, I think it's important to point out that the C-Type works lightweight, of which they made again only three cars for the 53 Le Mans race. Uh, the 53 works lightweight is, is essentially the rarest of the purpose-built competition Jaguars. This car is rarer than a long-nosed D-Type. It's rarer than an XKSS. It's rarer than an E-Type lightweight. It's as good as it gets.